Did you miss me? I hope not. I know it's been a while, but uh, here's my latest instalment. I haven't really had time to do many vlogs recently, uh, mainly because of the two Grand Prix in consecutive weekends. But a short way to sum them up is quite simply normal service has been resumed. So it seems Bernie Eccleston has finally figured out that Formula One is too expensive. Well done to him. It's only taken him several decades longer than it took other people to work it out. I mean, I've worked it out even as far back as 2008 when we had the Super Aguri team go out of business. And here we are in 2015 with more teams struggling to make ends meet. In a previous vlog, and I'm going to say it again, the best way for teams to be able to afford Formula One is if the prize fund distribution was completely flipped on its head. So we had the team finishing bottom getting the most money than the team finishing at the top. And while we're on the subject of a certain Mr. Eccleston, I do wish he, along with other people, would stop ha having a go at attacking the current generation of engine. It's here, it, it was brought in to reflect the everyday situation in the motor industry right now, which is hybrid engines and smaller engines itself and turbocharging. If they don't like it, it's particularly Bernie, he should retire. The answer to F1's dwindling viewing figures, I believe, comes from not the configuration or type of engine slash power unit but more to do with the decisions that have been made about broadcasters. There's been a trend in the last few years to have situations like it is here in the UK where you have Sky presenting the majority and all in this case the Grand Prix in the season and the BBC just having a token gesture. Only, if we're lucky, 10 Grand Prix shown live. Now, I'm not saying the BBC is better than Sky or vice versa. But what I am saying is that the fact that there's two broadcasters presenting one sport, it slashes the viewing figures. <clears throat> what you have is a situation where people wonder why should I pay all this money to, to watch a sport that I can watch on free to air? Therein, I think, lies the proof that the money is going to the teams that don't need it. So, the teams that are winning are getting more money than the teams that desperately need the money in order to survive. This is a critical phase for the sport that I love and certainly millions of others love. If we're not careful, we could see it go the same direction as the short-lived A1GP series. In other words, go out of existence.